Are you friends with Brian Brown? No, I don't know Brian Brown. He's been really, he's the leader of a national organization of marriage. He I've been in circles person. with Brian, you know, uh, through. He's sort of mean to me. Oh, really? Yeah. See, I don't know why. He said on the stage why. that I had a meltdown in Atlanta. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what he was talking about. Wow. <laughs> Well, Bishop Harry Jackson is one of our overseeing bishops in our you know, organization, and Wellington Boone, you know, is our father. You know, you know, we're here because of him. We're a church plant because of him, and we're a non-denominational church. You know, and our whole vision is to promote racial reconciliation. So usually that's where I'm at. I'm curious. Like, since you didn't say that, I was talking the meltdown that he was referring to mm -hmm. happened in Atlanta. Um, so-called meltdown, and I was talking to Dr. Albia King, um, Martin Luther King's uh, niece, mm -hmm. um, and I was asking her um, about what role she thought the federal judiciary had in the advancement of African Americans in America. Um, because there's a lot of talk by NAM and about this recent Prop 8 decision by Judge Bob Walker that, you know, he's overriding the will of the people, um, you know, that, you know, this is an activist judge, all that sort of rhetoric. Um, but I'm curious to know, you know, in the African African American civil rights history and that movement, there were a lot of Supreme Court justices and judges who stood up and led the public to say that, you know, this type of discrimination, this type of segregation is wrong. And so I wonder what you think of those judges who actually stood up and led, and how is that different than what Judge Ron what Judge Walker is doing out in San Francisco? Well, I haven't been tracking that as much as these guys have been, because I've been being a pastor right now. Well, but, so let's, let's throw but, out the gay court case, and let's just talk about the African-American civil rights movement. What role yeah. do you think? Do you think that we would be as far along as black people if it wasn't for judges, federal judges, stepping in and saying, um, discrimination isn't right? Yes. You do? I think we would probably be much further along, you know, because... Do you know that when Brown versus the Board of Education was decided that the majority mm -hmm. of the American public was against... Um, uh, integrating schools. Mm -hmm. And at the time that Loving Me Virginia was decided, the majority of the American public was against interracial marriage or any sort of mixing of the races mm -hmm. of any kind. Mm -hmm. And yet at that time, the court ste stepped up and said, wait a minute, I don't care what the public thinks. This is not a right that the public That's should right. vote on. This is what's this is, written. And because we're minorities, we have a right to equal protection. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, we had judges, you know, despite all the wonderful things that were going on in the South, the, you know, the bus boycott, we had judges step up and say, wait a minute, this is this wrong. Is wrong. Yeah. These people should be protected. And that's sort of, in my opinion, the same thing that's happening right now with the Prop 8 decision. Mm -hmm. You know, despite the fact that 52% of Californians voted, or for, despite the fact that 60% of Americans believe that same-sex marriage isn't right, mm -hmm. the judge is stepping in and saying, wait a minute, I don't care what you think. It's not your right to vote on this issue. This is about protecting American citizens. That's right. And so do you, is, do you see those sort of similarities? Or do you see where I'm coming from with this Yeah, question? yeah, I, I see. I see the similarities. Uh, so since you agree with me, you don't think that people should have the right to vote to limit other people's rights? I, I don't even want to say that either, you know. Why? Because... I, I feel like you're close to saying it, like you agreed with me earlier, but it's like, <laughs> yeah. you just don't want to say it. And and, and I, I feel like you're a man of God, and we should be, if we're going to have a civil, honest discussion about this, we at least have to sort of meet people in the middle. And if, like, we agree with the statement, then we have to be willing to agree with that statement. And find well, let me just say this. I it. do agree with you. I do agree with you. Everything you're saying, I do agree. You know, yeah. it's just that from my point of view, I have to... I have to be in a neutral place. But why does your point of view matter on this issue? Should it matter on this issue? I think it should matter because, again, like I said, we're protecting what was written. We're protecting God's constitution, and we have to stand on see, that. When I w I, I'm actually straight. I'm heterosexual, mm -hmm. um, and I'm working on this you know, marriage equality issue. Um, but what I saw happen in California, I'm from Los Angeles, what I saw happen in California was uh, the majority voting to limit the rights of the minority. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an extremely dangerous precedent for you and I, for women, for a lot of other minorities. You know that saying, you know, first they came for the Jews and I said nothing, and then they came for the Christians and I said nothing. Like, isn't this setting a dangerous precedent and aren't you part of perpetuating that precedent that was set by being here today? Oh yes, absolutely. I'm a part of that, you know. Is now, that okay with you? I'm okay too, with that too, and uh, I'm just sad that it wasn't a great so, turnout. So like next year they put um, California, or the people of California tried to put a law on the books that said black people can't go to this school, or black people can't marry Latino people, or black people can't get married, period, to whoever they want. You would support the right of the people to vote on that? I would vote against that. But you would support, you think that we should be voting on that as a country? You think that we should put that up to pop popular public opinion? Because I think 
think as a, as a 10% minority, it's really dangerous to start letting a 90% Absolutely. start voting on my rights. Absolutely. It sounds like you're comfortable with this idea that other people should be able to vote on my rights or on your rights. Like if someone, you know, you know, 50 years down the road, and maybe this isn't so ridiculous, someone put a law in the books that said that Christians couldn't practice their religion, right? And put it up to a majority vote. Do Christians want that up to a majority vote by the public, the way that religion is going right now? Could you I, be comfortable with another religion, you know, someone who practices Islam? Would you be comfortable with that religion dictating our no. theocracy? No, something? no, no. Well then, so how can, so that's why I think the, the separation of church and state is so necessary, because if a religion... So you think church should be separated from state? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Why? Because I don't think, for the exact same reason as I brought up the, you know, the Muslim or the Islamic person leading the country and all of a sudden deciding that the Quran should dictate how we live our the laws of our world. Let me just say like, that. I don't think that any person's religion, because we don't all agree to the same religion, should be dictating how we live our personal Here's lives. Here's what's happened to the school system because of the separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. They took church out of the schools. Mm -hmm. They stopped them from praying, mm -hmm. you know, and now look at the state of our schools. And so you think that's wrong? Do you think it, do you think that it, that all, you know, praying in school at all infringed on someone else's beliefs? All I'm saying is... What if someone is, doesn't believe in what you're praying to? Our schools, back in the old days, was based on the Bible. But back in the old days, we were also slaves. And back in the old days, you know, matter. we also had to drink from different fountains and go in different pools. The, so, like, this the idea that, why like... The reason why this nation is in the state that it's in, because we have separated ourselves the way we have. And, and until we get back to the basics of one nation under God... Now, there are all these different denominations right. out there, different religions, but there's only one one okay one way and Jesus is the way okay so but so you're saying that you'd be comfortable with someone else who doesn't believe that Jesus is the way and I personally believe that Jesus is the way to be a judge um, to be a judge to be the president to be a lawmaker you know someone who I'm doesn't not believe I'm in not that. okay with that look let me just say this I, I don't vote even with the presidency presidency I mean I don't vote you know culture or race I vote issues always have always Did will you vote for President Obama no I didn't really I mean because Are you he a didn't I'm neither. I just vote for the lesser of the two evils because I got to stand before God. Obama believes in abortion. He believes in same-sex marriage. So if I vote for him... What, he doesn't believe in abortion? No, McCain didn't believe in abortion. Okay. No, I mean, I saw he what was McCain... He was definitely pro-choice at one point in his career, but, you know, yeah, but he changed his mind. That's right. But the thing is, Obama is saying we want change. He's saying that we want the gays and lesbians to have a right. Do you ever wonder if you're wrong on this issue? No. No? I mean, do you? Um, yeah, I do, actually. I do, I do have that wonder, but I've sort of come to the place where I believe that, you know, I'd rather be wrong and err on the side of tolerance and love than be wrong and err on the opposite side. Like, I feel like I can explain this away. You know, Your Honor, you, you, know, you know God or Peter or whoever's at the gate? Like, you know, there was a lot of conflicting knowledge on this issue. I didn't know, you know, I had pastors telling me to go this way. I had other people, and then I knew the loving couples that I knew, my friends, my lesbian and gay friends that I know that one entered a loving relationships, and I was torn. And so I, because I don't know, because it's man's interpretation of what you think is right, I decided to err on love, and I'm, I'm comfortable being judged that way. That's, that's that's where I've come to. And and I respect your beliefs, you know. And You don't ever wonder that a little bit? Like, you know, what if you get up to the gate and they're like, you know what, you really read this the wrong way. And you went, no? Because a wavering man is unstable in all his ways. You know, you either this or you're that. You're hot, you're cold, you're loop, you're warm. You either know or you don't. There's no in-between. There is no in-between. If you're in-between, then you'll have a wavering view for the rest of your life. Will you tell Brian to stop being mean to me? Absolutely. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time, Pastor. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs>